This is the most explosive offense in Madden 24. Break yourself, fool! It has explosive run plays. Glitch routes to get open all over the field. And one play touchdowns versus every defense in the game. See ya. So if you want to see what brand new offense I'm using with results like this, stick around after the intro. The For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The plays from today's video can once again be found in my brand new Chicago Bears offensive and Las Vegas Raiders defensive ebooks. If you guys want more help or more money plays, you can download these or any of my ebooks simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. The team that I'm going to be using today is the Green Bay Packers, as I want to use some less OP teams, and the Eagles are all but dead to me at this point. So let me know in the comments section what teams you guys want me to use next in future videos, as I want to use all of them. I'm playing against another underrated team in the Atlanta Falcons, which is a team that I use a lot myself, so I know how good they are. But the real competition is in the player that I'm facing as I found out after the game that he's one of the highest rated players in this game mode. But I didn't know that when the game started, so I played him like I would anyone else when trying to make a video for YouTube. And by that I mean I'm going to try to use the same offense and defense all game so that I can showcase it for you guys. I started this game out on defense, and I'll once again be using my nickel 3-3 odd scheme that I made a gameplay video about just yesterday. I also made an entire breakdown of this scheme, so if you guys want to learn more, I will have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video, so stick around for that. The first drive is always the toughest, as you have no idea what your opponent likes to do, and it takes some time to figure it out. So on the first drive, despite using the Falcons with a less than average quarterback, it doesn't phase him at all as he goes right down the field on me. He starts to run the ball a little bit as he gets closer to my territory before he takes off with Desmond Ritter, and I should have gotten the ball right here. But he gets it back on second and two inside the five, so when I see that he's under center on the next play, I run commit, but at least I use it the right guy Nope. as I make him hold it just long enough to throw it late and out of the back of the end zone. Even though the two receivers on the other side were completely uncovered, proving that no one is perfect, and even the best players who have played thousands of games still make mistakes and bad reads in the moment, despite all the pro players in my comments section that never miss a receiver. On third and two, he tries to use the double drags concept, which is another really hard to stop play, but we shut everything down and force him to throw it away. Of course, he goes for it on fourth and two as he tries another hard to stop concept in the slants this time. How about new? The offense that I'll be showing you guys today is the reason that I switched over to the Bears playbook, as the gun normal while off close is my favorite offense in the game. I recently put out a full practice mode style breakdown of this offense from the Ravens playbook, but the Bears playbook has a slightly better combination of plays that I want to use, most specifically the Y sale, as this is probably the quickest and most explosive play in the formation, and maybe the game itself. So I always make sure to keep this in my audible plays. My other three audible plays are the double slant and the Y stick dig, which are also one play touchdowns against a lot of different defenses, and they all score in different ways. My last audible play is the inside zone, as you always need a run play to keep your opponent honest, and I will always switch to this whenever I see a light box. For my fifth and active play, I use the same double drags concept that my opponent just tried to score with earlier in the mesh spot, as this play is usually a guaranteed couple of yards against any defense man or zone, except mine of course. I call this play as my fifth and active play because it doesn't require any setup, so if I want to I can just line up and hike the ball before my opponent sets up his defense, giving me an instant advantage that I might not get given the added time it takes to switch plays. And since I need a few yards to get off the goal line, that's exactly what I do and that's exactly what I get. I call hurry up a lot in this game to keep him in his defenses, as I switch over to the run this time, but I also want to motion across this receiver here to set up future pass plays. This motion can also help you read the defense, as the cornerback doesn't follow, letting me know that he is in a zone defense. Because if he was in man coverage, the cornerback would follow him all the way across. When in zone, this motion has several benefits as well. Sometimes it will pull the linebacker out of his gap assignment, making it easier to run the inside zone. But even if it doesn't, like it did in here, it still gives me a numbers advantage, as it adds a blocker in the direction of travel without adding a defender. But this guy hops on the user and blows up the play anyway, forcing me to take a cutback lane to get anything positive. On third and three, I decide I'm either getting this first down or punting, and I already noticed that he is doing something where he comes out in a man zero blitz every play before switching over to the cover three. Cover three is vulnerable underneath the dropping cornerback, so I switch to the Y sail and just hit the running back flat route for an easy catch and run underneath for a first down on my biggest play of the game. I call a hurry up, and since it's first down and he is consistently switching to cover three, I decide it's the perfect time to take a shot. 
as I'm recording this for content purposes anyways, and I always want to get big explosive one-play touchdowns for my intro. So I go to switch to the Y sail play to motion across my receiver before I realize that I don't have the right receiver in this spot. So I decide to run the ball instead so I can just go back to the huddle and make my adjustments. But I also need to stay on the hash mark for this one-play touchdown to work, so I ultimately just burn it down to get back to the huddle while forcing to stay on the right hash mark. Which brings me to my next tip in the substitutions. Make sure to put your fastest or best receiver at this spot here, as this is the most important receiver in this game and will be responsible for most of the one-play touchdowns and explosive plays. You will also want to put your second best or fastest receiver on the outside on the other side just in case you got to flip the play. On the next play, I wait for him to predictably switch to cover three once again before I switch to the Y sail play. The one play setup for this play against this defense is to be on the hash mark to the short side of the field like I am here so that the single high safety will start closer to the two wide receiver side of the field. He is also programmed to shift over even more after I make the motion. After that, I just have to fade the Y and X routes to pull them over to that side even more after the play starts, and this will usually give you a look where the motion receiver can get inside of the safety enough to bullet and pass lead away. But I either can't make that type of pass lead with Jordan Love as this is the first time that I've ever used him, or Jesse Bates is just built different as he is the best safety in the entire game, and he almost makes a pick forcing a third and ten. I stay in the Y sale in the next play as I can still use the hash mark to my advantage against his cover three as the B receiver naturally pulls back the outside cornerback to get the tight end corner route open underneath. But Love sails it out of bounds, get it? Y sale, like why did he sail that? Never mind, I punted on 4th and 10 anyway. After my off zone coverage barely held up on the first drive, I decide I want to play the second drive more aggressively in blitz. So I choose the pinch 0, which is another blitz play that I put out in the full breakdown link in the description. But this play requires me to cover the running back after the play starts, and he decides to test my user, but that was a mistake, as I'm all over it and I get the ball right back. Gotcha, bitch! I try to get back on schedule with the double drags to get the third and three. I call a hurry up once again, thinking that I can get the first down on the ground. So I make that motion one more time, and this time, it even carries a linebacker out of the gap, like I said earlier. But this guy gets great run defense no matter what formation he's in. I don't usually go for it much on fourth down, but in this situation, I have to. And since double drags is my default play, I can quick hiking before he switches that couple three he's been running all game, making the drags get open even easier against the Manzer Bliss that he doesn't even want to be in. I read what looks like cover two zone the next play, and the Y sale usually gets open up the middle of this defense the exact same way it does against cover three. I just have to pass it a little bit better, as Jesse Bates separates him from the ball with his deep zone KO ability, but against anyone else, this is a touchdown. He goes back to cover three, and I keep trying since I'm recording this for the purposes of a YouTube video, but I am probably too close to the end zone at this point to score with the cover three play. So since I'm still in a hash mark, I try the tight end like I did earlier, and Love keeps it in bounds this time as I get inside the 10, as I call a hurry up and score on the double drags on the very next play. Chill, I bitch in here! On defense, I stay in the pinch zero since it worked so well the last time, and this time we get an instant sack, but it doesn't last very long as I try to switch out of it, and on the next play, he hikes the ball while everyone is all discombobulated. I switch up defenses to cover six and he gets a few yards on the next play, then I switch to the cover two man and he gets a few more. I stay in cover two though, and it starts locking these crossing routes down as we get a throw out of sack animation on the next play, followed by a coverage sack after that to push him back to a third and 16. And you can tell this defense has him frustrated as he held the ball in the first two plays before trying it on third and long gotcha, bitch. and his instincts were correct the guy was not open now with only 36 seconds left i recover two man and guess what this play can score against that defense as well with the exact same setup break yourself fool And we finally nailed the big play we were looking for to take a two touchdown lead and what's looking like a blowout against a top player but now down big with only 30 seconds left, I switched the cover to myself since it worked so well the first time. And it works on the first play, but you can't stay in the same defense too many plays in a row against good players or they will find holes as he goes right down the field on me against my prevent and scores. Damn it! But for the record, my defense made him switch offenses as his defense never does that to me the entire game. On the extra point though, it goes for the fake for some reason and fails, which has huge implications for the rest of this game as I get the ball back to start the second half. My offense has now made him change defenses as well as he's now coming out in a very light box, so I try to switch to the run to pound the rock a little and call a hurry up to keep him in it, as he keeps me into a third and inches before I call hurry up and get stuffed for no gain. I don't usually recommend playing aggressively like this, but for some reason I go for it a lot on fourth down in this game, so I call a hurry up one more time thinking that I have to be able to get a few inches against this look, as I hit the cutback lane to get all that back and then some, so long, suckers. to push my lead back to two possessions. And now he is running the same empty backfield look that he used to go right down the field on me before half. So I switched to cover for zone, but I aligned so that it looks like I'm back in man coverage. 
and Owens gets another interception to start the next drive in scoring range. But Love can't complete an easy pass on first down. Then on second down, I recover to zone, and I set up the one-play touchdown, but he is literally using the motion route now. So I just throw it away thinking that I will play it safe and kick the field goal to extend my lead. So much so that I even thought to just run the ball to make the kick even easier before scrapping all that BS by making my worst decision of the game by throwing on the run into a double team Oops. and gifting my opponent with a pick six to let him right back into the game. What, are you fucking retarded or something? That ain't fucking right. Now he has to go for two though, kind of. and we stop him again to at least preserve our two score lead with nine points. He's still coming out in small spread defenses though, so I take what he is giving me just to kill some clock, but his run defense forces me to cut back almost every time despite the huge run lanes as he forces me into a fourth and inches again from pretty much the same spot as last time. And I call a hurry up to keep him in it the exact same way by cutting it back and almost taking it to the house once again as I only had one man to beat. As long as he keeps coming out and spread defenses like this, I'm gonna keep running it as we get a big carry before getting stuffed and forced into another fourth and short situation. Only this time, I can kick a field goal so I take the points to extend my lead. On defense, he is now in an empty backfield five wide look for the entire drive as he has to score fast, but this defense is giving up nothing and forcing him to run with his quarterback on just about every play, which is totally cool with me since I'm more worried about the clock. But for some reason on the next play when I'm making my adjustments, the cornerbacks on the outside flip the entire length of the field, slowly jogging into position, and he hikes the ball before they get set, resulting in a broken coverage and an easy touchdown. Fix your fucking game, EA. I mean, to be honest, if it wasn't for all this dumb shit happening, I think I'd be blowing this guy out. Out. And now it's a one score game with just under four minutes left. And to make things worse, I go for that cover three bomb one more time on the next play. Ah, you mother and Jesse Bates finally got it, as now the game relies on my defense. As Ritter is the running back once again, and he gets into a field goal range in just two plays. So I'm done playing passive prevent, as I switch to the pinch zero blitz. <laughs> Your ass down. and shut his run play down for a loss. On the next play, I want to throw something completely different at him, so I just switch to some random cover three match. And I don't know what play he called or what happened, but this corner route would have been gone for a wide open touchdown if I wasn't all over it, as he takes the check down underneath instead. I go back to cover two man on the next play and everything is locked up as we force him to hold it until he makes a bad throw on the run to force a fourth and six for the game. And I'm going out swinging with the play of the goddess here in the pinch zero blitz. And it works flawlessly as the pressure is instant and he can't get away, but he does get the ball up the pits for a chance. <laughs> He still has all his timeouts left though, so we need to get a first down, and he is packing the box so I can't run the ball. So I try to pass on first down, but I just don't trust it, and I take the sack to keep the clock running. He calls a timeout and opens up his defense a little bit, probably thinking they can't keep him from getting 15 on the ground. And he's right, but I did get 12 and another timeout from him. Now in third and three, since I'm on a hash mark and he is in a cover three, I'm going to go for the one play touchdown one more time. I'm just kidding, but instead I'm going to pull a glitchy play out of my arsenal that he hasn't seen yet in the double slant. For this play to work, you need a fast tight end and Musgrave is perfect at 89 speed. You also need to be on a hash mark to the short side of the field like I am here and it also helps that he's playing for the three yards which means he's pressing his defense. After that I make the exact same motion that I've been making this entire game only this time I put the running back on a streak as he is responsible for pulling back the cornerback in the area and let the wheel route get wide open outside and I drop it right in the bucket for the first down before accidentally running out of bounds. I could take a knee here but since this is an offensive video I decide to run the exact same play once again only this time he run commits. for a huge rubbing and score before getting me the satisfaction of that rage quit. See ya. Better late than never. So that's this video. If you guys want to see a full breakdown of the offense or defensive schemes that I use to beat this guy, just click the links on screen. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.